Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We're the Gnome Zip. This is Sharon Oyella, and today we're making this gnome topper. He can also be a hanging ornament. So this video is pretty much an extension of my last video where I showed you how to make these mushrooms. Just a heads up, if you did watch that video, it has been taken down. I had some editing issues, so I had to take it down and fix it. And now it's been re-uploaded, and the new link for the mushroom is now popping up on your screen. It can also be found in the pinned comment below. And in that video, I referred to a tree topper that I had in mind, and this is it. I didn't know I was going to be able to get them done in time, but here we are. And you can make them without arms and legs. Actually, in the video, I wasn't even sure until I was halfway through that those were going to be added. So you'll be able to see what it looks like without them. Let's take a look at what I used to build this little guy. Now, if you want a more in-depth look at the supplies list, you can see that in the mushroom video. They're pretty much built the same way. And I talk about the supplies in much more detail over in that video. So to make one little gnome, I use some foil, masking tape, paper towels, and then optional is some fabric. I use a little bit of fabric on his hat. You don't have to do that. In fact, in this video, I show you what it looks like when it's just painted. And for his beard, I use some of this fake fur. If you don't have any of that on hand, you can use cotton balls or some yarn. And I did add a loop on the back of his hat, and for that, I just used some thread. All right, my friends, let's get started. In the next clip, I've just rolled off a little bit of foil. So this is the top of the head, and this is the bottom of the body. So we're going to make like a triangle shape. So I'm going to roll off about six inches of foil. So as I'm crumpling it, I'm going to shape it into this triangle. I don't fold it or anything because once you start folding it, then it loses some of that bulkiness. So I'm going to crumple it as it is. Okay, and then crumpling the, the bottom up and the sides in, shaping the triangle. Okay, I think that will do the trick there. I was just working out different ideas for the hat, and I think the easiest thing to do is make a cone and do that by rolling off about six inches of foil and then fold it in half side to side. Now I just put my finger in the middle on the top and I just kind of shape around it to make a cone, a cone like shape. Keeping the bottom open and we're also going to be cutting off the bottom as well. Pinch the top. Okay, I'm going to cut off about that much at the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to fold. So we have a little bit of a thicker lip underneath around the bottom of the hat. Okay, and if you're not happy with the shape at all, you can always change it by adding more foil or cutting some foil away. So let's just see how that works. So I'm going to take some foil. I'm just going to fill the inside of the cone so it doesn't collapse on me. And I'll just push it in. So I think right there we have a good base to work with. Now this could change as we go along. The inside in here is about an inch deep, I would believe. And when I stick this in there, it stops. And there's about an inch sticking out at the bottom. All right, so I can see already that he's going to be super cute. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be adding arms or legs. We'll get there. But first of all, I do want to add that big nose underneath here because that's all we're going to be seeing on the front of him. The rest of it's all going to be covered by that long hair and that beard. So we don't even have to worry about details. We just have to worry about getting that nose on there. So I'll take a small piece of foil and I'll leave part of it unsquished so I can have something to put on, on the gnome itself. So I'll just work on the bottom part and make a bulb out of it. So there's his nose, and I'll just try it out here. <laughs> it's going to be cute. So now that I know that's the way I want it, I'm just going to put some tape around, make sure that nose stays put. There we go. And we'll just try her out. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be cute. All right, so I've got them all covered in the tape and the body doesn't really matter if there's any like big bumps or creases because it's all gonna be covered up anyway. But his nose is gonna be seen. So what I do is I just narrow down the tape. If you do it that way, you'll get less bumps and stuff. The narrow pieces are just easier to work with. When I turn to the side though, it looks like he should have a bigger butt. And I think I'm gonna add that right now. It'll also help the hat sit better. So now I will cover the hat in the masking tape as well. And I'm still not sure what I'm going to be covering this up with. 
if I'm just going to paint it or what I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, it's a little bit loose and that's good because I want to be able to stick hair and the beard under there. But I think that looks really good. And I just kind of help shape the part over the nose just by rounding it out with my, my thumbs. I'm going to cover everything with a paper towel and for this I just break it down. I just stack it and then tear all the sides. Alright, so I got all my pieces torn. I just get a little pile there. And if you have a piece of styrofoam, that's really helpful for using as a drying stand because you can stick whatever you need to into it. I don't have any on hand so I'm just going to use a little piece of foil. And I've got a pointy thing here on all. Anything with a point on the end that you can stick inside the hat. And when I set it aside to dry I can just put it there. Okay, so I'm going to do the inside first. So I just paint the glue in there. And I'll go around the edges, place a piece in, and then paint it down. The hat itself is going to be glued on top of the head. We're not going to see inside there, but I still want to get the paper towel in there because it gives a nicer surface for gluing into. It also adds another layer of strength. Okay, so I think the inside is good enough. And now I'm going to put my all in there. And I'll just paint the glue all over the outside. And of course, if you're just going to paint over that paper towel and you're not going to put any fabric or anything on it, you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. You don't have any big bumps or anything. So I'm just going to set it aside for drying and I'll work on the gnome itself. So the body itself, it doesn't really matter. It's just the nose that's going to be seen. What I'll do is I'll put a piece right on the very tip. And I'll smooth that down. Okay, and then I'll get another piece for around it. Okay, I'm going to put another piece right on the front and again smooth it right down. Now I will cover the rest with the paper towel. I got them stuck on something pointy just to make it easier for myself. All right, they've been sitting under the fan for a little bit and once the paper towel is completely dry it turns into the color of the masking tape underneath so you can see a little bit of wet here is where the white is it's dry to the touch it's just wet underneath the paper towel but it's okay to go ahead and paint it and then you just sit in front of the fan again. all right so there he is now he would look super cute just the way he is and you could add a beard but anyway i want to add arms and i would have edited this video in the beginning and let you know that was happening uh, but i didn't know until just now so I just take a piece of foil, shaped it like an arm. I left the back open so I can attach it. So I haven't got as far as the legs yet. I'm just going to do these arms first. So same thing, I'm going to be taping it up and then I'll add the paper towel. Okay, so once I get the paper towel on there, these will become one piece with the body. So once the paper towel dries, everything is going to become solidified so we don't have to worry about those arms coming off in the future. So I'm just figuring out legs and I think what I want to do is have it so the legs are coming off the front so he can sit. So you just leave the top open, just like we did for the arms. And I'm going to be placing the legs here and then tape them in. So I'll go ahead and do that and you can design the legs however you want to on yours of course. I'm just going to thicken up his boots as well while I'm at it. So I'll get the other leg on there and then we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. I found it really helpful to set him on the side of the table and kind of shape the legs around that so he's in a seated position. So I'm going to go ahead and put the paper towels on just like I did for the rest. The one thing I'll say about adding on like this, like we've added on the legs and the arms, you want to make sure that the paper towel overlaps the edges so they do become one solid piece. I'm just going to make the cuff on the arm, so I just put glue on both sides there, on the end, and then I'm going to roll this. And you can see I added the cuff here. I did manipulate it before it dried with my little tool. I made sure to pull it away from the arm to make it look more natural. I added the belt the same way, and a cuff to the bottom of the pants the same way. I did add a top coat just to give it a little bit of shine for those boots. 
and I've cut a little notch for the nose. I use straight tacky glue and I put most of the glue up here because that's where I want the beard to get stuck down. Down here I just put some on the edges just to keep that, that fur from coming off. So he's pretty much done. And I love him, but his hat here, I was just thinking, I could leave it like this. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But to add a little bit more interest, I was gonna add this scarf-like material. I tried some felt and stuff, but it was just way too thick. It made it look too bulky. So I have this very thin material. I've never done this before, so I'm just gonna wing my way along here. You can already tell that's too much glue. It's coming right through the fabric, so I'm just going to take it off. So I'll try with less glue this time. And I want those dots to come around the front, like right over that lip that goes over the nose. I want those dots to line up. There we go. Yeah, less glue is better with these uh, lighter materials. I forgot about that. The glue will come right through. and It'll be noticeable. So just lightly paint the glue on. So I'll do one side first. Glue that down. I'm going to take some of this bulk away. And I'll glue down the tip. So that glue is pretty much grabbed on already. And I'll take some of this bulk away. So you can see this final seam here, I didn't make very straight because I don't want it to be a straight line. I'll pull this over and push it in place. That uneven seam worked out really well. It kind of helps it disappear. So if you put a straight line, you would definitely see that. And then the tacky glue, you want to make sure it's very, very light. Spread it out like I did in the video so it doesn't come through the fabric. And just inch your way along and cut away bulk as you go. I'm going to use a needle to pull my thread through the hat. And I want to go through the back. Might need a little bit of help. Okay, pull one end through and leave the other one hanging inside. Now going over just a little bit from where you came out of, go back in. I'm just gonna put my fingers through there so I don't pull it through as I'm knotting it. And I'll knot these two thread tails on the inside. Now I will cut that free. Now I'm gonna use hot glue and tacky glue together. Put tacky glue all around the inside edge. And then I'm gonna put hot glue on the very inside. Just drop it in there. The hot glue will hold the hat in place while the tacky glue dries. And I'll just push that together. Hold for a couple seconds. So I just finished the mushroom that he's going to hold on top of the tree. And it's made exactly the same way I made the little ones, except for it's bigger. And I don't have a loop on top, so I was able to put one solid piece of paper towel on top and glue it that way, which gave me a nicer or a smoother finish on the, on the top. And because it doesn't have a loop, I couldn't hang it to dry. So I just used one of these little clips binder clip would work as well. And then I was able to put it on the table and set it in front of a fan to dry. And I ended up sticking a hole in his bottom to put him right on top of the tree. So he's sitting on a wire and I didn't hang him on his loop after all. And he works either way. I think he's perfect up there. I absolutely love him. And I hope you do too. And if you do make a little gnome or some of the mushrooms, I'd love to see post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live or tag me on Instagram, oyella underscore crafts. Both those links are in the pinned comment below. And I hope you all have happy holidays and we'll see you in the next one.